please be seated. Graduates, guests, colleagues, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this very important occasion in the splendid surroundings of our Whitworth Hall. We are here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate your achievements and your hard work, culminating in the award of your degrees. We know you're extremely smart people, not least because you chose to come to the University of Manchester. But we hope you've gained a great deal, not only academically, but also personally, from your time at Manchester. It takes a lot of effort and dedication to get to this point in your career, and it will stand you well for the future. So well done. I also want to say a thank you to your friends and families, who certainly will have supported you throughout that time in many ways, not least perhaps financially. And so I would now like to ask our graduates, please all stand. and say a big thank you and a round of applause to everybody who's helped you to get to this point. Thank you, you may sit down again. So at the present time, there's a great deal of talk of the value of a degree. But surely a degree on a university experience is about much more than how much you're going to earn. And if you leave this university with some letters after your name and a piece of paper, then, and that's all, then it won't have been a good experience. We hope that you've gained much more from your time at the University of Manchester. We hope that this may have formed your opinions, given you many experiences, and allowed you to meet many friends, a number of which will be lifelong. The University of Manchester dates back to 1824 and is the first civic university based in the original modern city of Manchester. We're a global university with many international students and staff, and indeed I often travel the world and meet some of our alumni in far corners. We believe we have nearly 400,000 graduates of the University of Manchester living today. Our achievements at the university continue across the arts, humanities, science, engineering, medicine. Achievements of our students and of our staff. And just a few major recent awards and events include the appointment of our new chancellor, Lem Sisse, the renowned poet. Our staff survey, which showed that over 90% of our staff found the University of Manchester a very good place to work. We've opened some spectacular new facilities, such as the National Graphene Institute, and the Cancer Building and are working on more that will provide excellent spaces for staff and students. If you walk around the campus, and please do take your visitors around the campus, hopefully you will see the beautiful old buildings such as this one and many others alongside some of our very newest buildings. And indeed we're putting a lot of effort into refurbishing and renovating some of our beautiful historic buildings. But of course, a university is about much more than infrastructure much more than bricks, mortar, wires, technology, or, or even books. It's about people, and it's about you. So I want to thank you for contributing to this university, and hopefully continuing to, continuing to contribute in the future. We should not forget the privilege of a university education, because there are many young people around the world who could not even hope or aspire to attend a university some of them not so far from this place. So we should recognize the value of that education and hopefully it will stand you in good stead for the future. And the last thing I want to say is, I hope today is not goodbye. I hope you will remain in contact with the university, you will join our alumni association, because like it or not, you are now ambassadors of the university and you will forever be graduates of this university. So today is a celebration of everything you have achieved. Stay in touch, you will always be welcome. Thank you. So now it's with real pleasure that I invite the Acting Registrar and Secretary to escort our honorary graduate, 
Prof Professor Michael Wood onto the platform for the conferment of his honorary degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Professor Keith Brown, the Vice President and Dean of Humanities, will give the oration and then Michael will reply. President and Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, the tale of someone's life begins before they are born is a comment made by Michael Wood in his 2003 documentary, In Search of Shakespeare. And it offers some insight into his fascination with history as a tool by which we explain ourselves. And over the last three and a half decades, this prolific British broadcaster and historian has been explaining the multidimensional matrix of time, place, and events, which is what history is, building on a childhood interest in his own family roots and a youthful obsession with the Anglo-Saxons before going on to explain the rise and fall of global civilizations. Michael has spent his entire life on a quest, a search for dark age warriors and kings, mythological Trojan heroes, Alexander the Great and his companions, Beowulf, and so many other legendary figures of history. The inquisitiveness that drove the young Michael Wood to quiz his own family about their own personal life stories has also led him to delve into the past of the ordinary people of Britain. It fires his enthusiasm to talk to live audiences, such as at a recent event in the People's Museum in Manchester. For all his globetrotting, Michael has not lost touch with his own origins here in Manchester, a city he loves and home to his beloved Manchester United. Whether addressing the grand flow of history or the minutiae of the locality, Michael peels off the layers that make us who we are, tracing back the timelines to our origins until we can stare our distant relatives in the face. Before Michael Wood, TV history BMW if you like, what we saw of history on the small screen was Donish and patrician. It was stately and painter, static and painterly best characterized by those of you who remember it by Kenneth Clark's 1969 series, Civilization, in which this grandee gatekeeper permitted ordinary people like us a peek inside the exclusive world of high culture. And then in 1979, a 31-year-old journalist and emergent TV producer from Moss Side, who had been smart enough to get into Manchester Grammar School before going on to get himself an Oxford history degree exploded onto the BBC with In Search of the Dark Ages. Michael was first seen from above, striding along off his dyke, animated, passionate, hands gesturing, talking to you and not down at you, all characteristics that are still recognizable in his presentations today. He had long hair, some of us did then, was fashionably dressed and became associated with very tight flared jeans and a sheepskin coat later replaced by leather jackets and scarves. And I have to say this, he was so sexy, he earned the unforgettable description, the thinking woman's crumpet. <laughs> Only in England could you come up with a phrase like that. Every history presenter down to this day walks in Michael Wood's footsteps, and he's still setting the pace. His 2010 story of England, in which he accessed the history of England, through the lens of the village of Kebworth in Leicestershire with the help of local people, was described by the independent newspaper as the most innovative history series ever made on television. The New York Times commented recently that his work is still the gold standard in the industry. In the industry. Since 2012, Michael has been the professor of public history here at the University of Manchester, a post that might be worth explaining. Like other history professors, Michael finds time to engage in scholarly, erudite activity, continuing to work on his first love, the Anglo-Saxons, the subject of a long-abandoned Oxford PhD. But thank goodness he did abandon it, for Michael's audiences are counted in their millions. He's reached more people in his 100-plus documentary films, his radio contributions, his many books, and his public lectures and talks than all the history academics in Manchester put together. His 2007 series, The Story of India, six episodes bursting with color and grandeur and intimacy, expanded his already worldwide audience onto an entirely new level. 
the series he is currently filming on the history of China will probably ensure he will reach more people than any historian who has ever lived. This is what it means to be a professor of public history. Most historians are not terribly adventurous in pursuit of their quarry. Our environment is largely confined to lar libraries, archives, and the occasional ruin. Michael, however, is more akin to a foreign or even a war correspondent, arguing with Afghan warlords from the Hindu Kush, getting lost looking for a forgotten Inca city, being arrested on the Iran-Iraq border, filming the Krishna Leela play in 47 degrees in Mathura, not to mention the quarrels he and his wife, producer Rebecca Dobbs, have had with BBC management. From those first steps along Office Dyke to his documentaries on great railway journeys to the remarkable 1997 series In the Footsteps of Alexander the Great, footsteps that travelled 20,000 miles to his current traversing of China, Michael has been on a lifelong journey by every form of transport imaginable to seek out truth, to tell us the stories of our beginnings and how we got from there, wherever there is, to here. And so, President and Vice-Chancellor, I'm pleased to present to you Michael Wood for the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. By the, power, by the power vested in me by the university and with great personal pleasure, Michael, I confer on you the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Congratulations. I would now like to invite Michael to reply. Thank you very much, Nancy, and thanks, Keith. I'd hoped we'd have forgotten the tight jeans, but um, President, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, and my fellow graduates and, and students, it's a very great honor and pleasure to stand here today. I know that every honorary graduate feels that way, but I feel especially honored because, as you've heard, I'm a proud Mancunian. And this great university has played a central role in the life of our great city for nearly 200 years now. We'll be celebrating that anniversary in the not too distant future. And uh, uh, with my historian's hat on, Manchester itself has played a great role, not, in the not only in the history of the UK, but the history of the world. And not just in industry and trade, but in movements to democracy and social justice, science, women's rights, and education. So all of us here today are part of a much bigger story of interlocking and enduring ideals which give value and meaning to our present and, I believe, to our future, too. Um, can I also say that I feel very proud to be here because my father was a, uh, did his degree here as an external student. He was a chemist, had to work in a dispensary in the 30s and earn his money, but it was his university, too. And when I was a kid, we used to come past this great brownstone building, and he used to talk about the university, and we always felt that we had a little stake as a family in this great institution. And now, as you've heard from Keith, I am delighted to say that I, I have my own little stake in it um, with the work I've been able to do in between the China shoots as a professor, almost a visiting professor so far, but a professor of public history here. Uh, not only working with the students, but uh, memorable visits out to FE colleges and sixth form colleges and schools out in Rochdale and Oldham and Bury and Stockport, meeting the next generation. It's been truly inspiring. Last thing, the university has a world name now, and we've really seen this firsthand filming in China for the last couple of years or so. Uh, a great name not only in cutting edge science, but in and economics and business, but in the humanities too. And through Keith's introductions, we've linked up with Beijing University, the Confucian Institute, the main Chinese TV channels, brought them back to Manchester in talking about history and TV. It's one world now, and this university, I feel, is uniquely placed to play a great role in that over the next few years. So many thanks again to my fellow graduates today, um, Congratulations, good luck in all your adventures in life and in work. And old fogies are supposed to give one word of advice in speeches like this, so my word of advice is never forget your passions. 
because your passions have got you this far today, the interests you've cultivated all your life. And even if you go in a different track in life, in a different kind of job, they will still sustain you through your life. And uh, as you can see, you never know where they lead. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I'm delighted to say it's now the turn of our student graduates to be awarded their degrees, and I want to invite first Professor Jeremy Gregory, who's going to tell you a little of the achievements of our students and the School of Arts, Languages and Cultures, and then we will be conferring the degrees. Thank you, Jeremy. President and Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, and, and your families and friends, as head of the School of Arts, Languages and Cultures, I'm delighted to congratulate those of you graduating today on your stunning success in obtaining your degrees. Colleagues in the school are extremely proud of what you've achieved. They have worked closely with you, often for four years or more. And some of you graduating today have studied with us for your BA, MA, and PhD programs, meaning that you've shown loyalty to us for over eight years, and you've become very much part of our academic community. We hope that you've all found your time here intellectually and academically stimulating. Because whatever else studying for a degree gives you, the experience should have been one where you found yourselves both challenged and excited. And I'm extremely grateful to my colleagues for having given you that experience. For many of you, I have no doubt it will have transformed your lives, though you may not know it yet. So I'd therefore ask you all to join me in thanking the teaching and support staff and your supervisors for all their efforts and dedication during your time with us. <laughs> this ceremony in our magnificent Whitworth Hall reminds us of the bold Victorian hopes and aspirations for our university. It also reminds us that the disciplines you've studied have had a long and distinguished record at this institution. The school has the oldest French department in the UK, and it was one of the first to teach Italian. And although it's only in the last nine years that we've had departments of Chinese and Japanese, aspects of these were taught from the 1930s. And I'm very pleased to say that today, modern languages and related subjects are flourishing areas within the school known for their excellent teaching and research. In the recent national research evaluation exercise, where institutions were judged on the quality of their research, the research environment, and the impact of their research on the wider world, colleagues in modern languages, together with colleagues in linguistics, were placed third in the UK, taking into account the quality of their research and the impressive number of staff in this area. And graduates at this ceremony have all completed a degree in some aspect of the study of language. What unites you all is an interest in different cultures and languages and the way that these shape people's view of the world. To try to impress upon you how important language studies is, stop for a moment and think about what humans could have achieved if they had not had language. But of course, it's not clear how we would even be able to think without language. So language is then central to what it means to be human. And there's no doubt, therefore, that the degree programs you've studied are of phenomenal value to the world at large. And what you might be interested in knowing is that students of modern languages are among the most highly employable of all those graduating this fortnight. And you have the knowledge, understanding, skills, and expertise which are increasingly prized in our global world. Those of you graduating today show tremendous breadth in the range of languages you have studied, but also in how you've approached language studies through translation or as a vehicle for and an expression of culture and history and through literature and film. And this combination of depth and breadth in language-based studies is something which I'd want to claim as characteristic, even distinctive, of languages provision at this university. We have teaching and research expertise in Arabic, Catalan, Chinese, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. 
And of those languages I've mentioned, at least eight, depending on how you do the calculation, are in the top 10 most spoken languages in the world. Students this year have produced some outstanding work, and I'm pleased to be able to announce the following prizes. The Dean's Awards for Academic Achievement, and this is for students with a final classification of 75% or above, go to Amanda White from Chinese and Japanese. Jennifer Dixon. Jennifer also won the Japanese Studies Prize for the best overall result in Japanese studies and the prize for the best dissertation. <laughs> Beth Lacey, French and Russian, and Beth also won the William Mather Prize in Russian. The J.W. Rees Memorial Prize for an outstanding performance in Spanish goes to Natalie Ohio Renoa. <laughs> the Institute Ramon Lul Prize in Catalan goes to Isabel Zimzek. <laughs> the Blakey Prize for French translation goes to Hattis Torun. The Bogdanow Prize for Best Performance in French Language goes to Isabel Zimzek. The Wadsworth Award for the Best Overall Performance in French goes to Joe Edwards Evans. The Gunter Kloss Prize in German goes to Zana Chaka. And the Arvid Johansson Prize in German goes to Anjana Selvathanthan. <laughs> As a sign of the school's commitment to MA students, I'm delighted to be able to announce that the school will offer a £3,000 bursary to any student graduating from the university with a first-class degree who registers on one of our MA programmes. The school's web and social media officer has asked me to remind you that the school is running a graduation selfie competition. So please tweet us your selfie if you want to take part. I should add that selfies should not be taken during the ceremony. <laughs> After this ceremony, I invite you to join colleagues for a reception in the graduation marquee. I hope you thoroughly enjoy today. Please keep in touch with us and visit us when you're back in Manchester. We wish you the very best of luck for the future and look forward to hearing how you're doing. Thank you. President, Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Li Wen Chang. Claire Jennifer Copley. <laughs> Tanya Paula Hernandez Hernandez. <laughs> Joshua Thomas Kirby. <laughs> Ksenia Korolovitz. Dong Hong Oh, <laughs> Veronica Pizzarotti, <laughs> Andriani Theocaros. And for the degree of Master of Modern Languages, French and German, with honours, Matthew Ford. <laughs> and in French and Spanish, with honours, Daniel Mark Powell. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Chinese and Japanese, with honours, Amanda White.
and in Chinese studies with honors, Benjamin Thomas Brown. <laughs> Marta Alicia Berska. <laughs> Catherine Jane Hansen. <laughs> Yelena Manatsakanyan. And in East Asian Studies with Honours, Magella Burnett. <laughs> Ian Dixon. <laughs> and in French and Chinese with Honours, Jorge Alejandro Cerrato Pacheco. <laughs> Stephen McCormick. And in French and German with honours, Zana Chaka. <laughs> Sarah Lee. <laughs> Sarah Longdon. <laughs> Louis Martin Sincala. Ashley Snell. And in French and Italian with honors, Constance Chalmers. Deborah Anna Di Caro. Matthew Thomas Hughes. Emily Mahoney. Claire Nichols. Louis Raffin. Catherine Raggett. Amy Swainston. And in French and Japanese with honors, Jamie Spittle. And in French and Russian with honors, Naomi Hopkins. Alexander Scott. And in French and Spanish with honors, Farah Aden. Zubin Bativala. <laughs> Alexander Bottomley. <laughs> Rachel Bull. <laughs> Martha Clark. <laughs> Rebecca Louise Corns. Christopher Cotter. <laughs> Henrietta Dillon. <laughs> Sophie Helen Douglas. <laughs> Robin Roseanne Dunn. <laughs> Jessica Emmett. Madeleine Hickman. Andrew Holt. Lauren Howells. Callum Hoyle. Fabienne Johnson. Laurie Ann Kaczerinski.
Marcus Kelly. Alexandra Langley. Rona Louise Lefebvre. Laraba Martha Osomar. Nikila Patel. Olivia Richard. Harry William McKeague Robinson. Amelia Strange. Lloyd Tillerson. Laura Turska. Francis Twelve Tree. Isabel Zimzek. And in French studies with honours, Matthew Banks. <laughs> Catherine Bonner. <laughs> Marie Louise Suzanne Brown. <laughs> Joe Edwards Evans. Rose Faulkner. Alexandra Harvey. Eleanor White. And in German and Chinese with honors, Cassandra Marie Dominique Phillips. And in German and Italian with honours, Katie Cavendish. Jenny Oral. And in German and Japanese with honours, Lauren McElroy. Sophie Sethi. And in German and Russian with honours, Joseph Golding. Morgan Hollett. Hannah Louise Lester. Helen Rutherford. Victoria Zahrodna. And in German and Spanish with honors, Philippa Jane Balduck. Abigail Louise Bates. David Corrales. Heather Eastop. Claire Jordan. Natalia Pasta Pierce. Daniel Kevin Rice. And in German studies with honors, Dominic Edmondson. Cora Firth. Charlotte Lucy Green. Rosie Hammonds. Laura O'Hearn.
Emma Richards. Adriana Roda. And in Italian and Spanish with honors, Gushanika Bernardi Mazzello. Chloe Dawson. Emma Dunderdale. Melissa Gaskell Burnup. George Christopher Hurd. Hannah Hurst. Catherine Allison Liversedge. Cara Thomas Neen. Rebecca Wharton. Adriana Winters. And in Italian studies with honors, Estrild Cornish. Cora Craigmile. Phoebe Gibson. And in Japanese studies with honors, Adam Barnett. Christina Marianne Bash. Christopher John Burfoot. Samantha Burton. Sophie Coates. Joe Dart. Jennifer Hikari Dixon. Nazana Leskovitz. Ingrid Nurse Nitvitner. Agle Rimkunaiti. Diana Varro. Karen Yamada. And in Russian and Japanese with honors, Samuel George Benbo Cordwell. And in Russian studies with honors, Hannah Isabel Anderson. Cornell Beggs. Olivia Bradley. Stefka Litvin. James Mascheter. Francesca May Palmer. Oscar Wales. Jordan Worsley. And in Spanish and Chinese with honors, Daniela Bridger. <laughs> Bo Jean McConaughey. <laughs> Rebecca Townsend. <laughs> Constanza Para.
and in Spanish and Japanese with honours, Rosa Joyce. And in Spanish and Portuguese with honours, Hannah Shano. George Frederick Kemp Chatty. <laughs> Natalie Sade Ohio Renoya. <laughs> Ricardo Alexandre Raimundo Elviro. <laughs> Adrian Register. Marianne Thompson. And in Spanish, Portuguese, and Latin American studies, with honors, Anthony Hawkins. Lucy Pinkerton. Rosalind Sophie Walker. Eleanor Whitaker. <laughs> Katrina Emily Wyatt. <laughs> and for the Diploma of Higher Education in Modern Languages, French and Italian, Deborah Penner. So once again, warmest congratulations to all of you on behalf of the university. We wish you every success in your future careers and happiness in your future lives. And don't forget, stay in touch. Thank you also so much for coming and sharing this very important day with us today on campus. I hope you'll spend a little longer with us and have a safe journey home. So graduates of the University of Manchester, don your caps. Please all stand. I now declare this ceremony closed. Thank you.